Hi, my name is Daniel and today I will talk about the Azure Dev Test Labs service. The Azure Dev Test Labs service provides you a self-service portal to spawn up virtual machines or pass resources on Azure. So the first question would be, why would anybody need that if there's already the Azure portal that can be used to create virtual machines or to create pass services? Um, the answer for that is that typically developers and testers are not allowed to interact with the Azure portal in an enterprise scenario. Very often the Azure subscription and everything running in there is owned by a separate IT team. So if a developer or tester needs a virtual machine or a, any kind of pass service just to try something out, um, they always have to reach out to another team. So why is that? The reason for that is that there are often a lot of different parties involved when it comes to providing any kind of resource within an enterprise. Let's say I'm a developer and I'm working on my machine on the software that I'm supposed to write and then suddenly I want to try out a new framework or a new tool but I don't want to install that new framework or tool on my main machine because I might spoil it. Instead I want to try it out on a different machine, maybe on a virtual machine. To get that virtual machine, I reach out to another team and that other team would be, for example, the IT department. The IT department typically owns all the infrastructure and um, of course they have to make sure that everything that's running in their infrastructure is secure and that there is a reason for that to run. So what we hear from our customers is that if people like developers reach out to infrastructure teams and ask for virtual machines or any kind of services running in the cloud. Often they're faced with a delay of three weeks or even three months until they get their resources. Obviously this is a lot of wasted time. To make things even more complex, often there's a third party involved. That third party would be, for example, the project owner. So he wants to make sure that developer teams don't spend huge amounts of money for resources they don't use efficiently. We have the developer who needs flexibility. We have the IT folks who care a lot about security. And we have uh, the project owner who is interested in the outcome of the development project, but who has, of course, to make sure that cost is under control. And so, to sum up, we simply have competing interests here. We just heard that some of our customers tell us that it takes three weeks or even three months to get a resource that developers need. Um, Jim Highsmith, one of the co-authors of the HL Manifesto, said that the best way to get a project done faster is to start sooner. And this is exactly what's been addressed with the Azure Dev Test Labs. While you're waiting for a resource at, let's say, the project start, because the resources you need for development are not created already and you have to ask other folks to create them for you, what you lose is a certain amount of time. And this amount of time is really wasted because during that amount of time your productivity is very low because you don't have the tools you need to get started. Then as soon as all systems are available you can actually start working efficiently and of course at some point in time that you thought would be the project end you will realize that in the beginning of the project you lost a lot of time because that time was wasted waiting for resources. And of course you have to add that initial amount of time that has been passed again at the end. And therefore your overall project simply is being delayed by the amount of time you've lost in the beginning. The concept of Azure Dev Test Lab is pretty simple. Basically you get a self-service portal that means a website where you can log in as a developer or a tester and you can use that site to spin up either virtual machines or any kind of pass service or infrastructure on Azure that can be wrapped into an ARM template. As a project owner, you can set boundaries to limit the kind and size of resources 
that developers can use. You can also provide some standard artifacts that you want to see that your developer is using. For example, you could say you have certain software assets that shall be used by your developer team, or you have specific virtual machine templates that you would want to see them using, or specific configurations of path services in Azure that you want your developer teams to use. Above all of that, there's still central IT. Central IT will make sure to set the, some global limits and policies that will always be kept. And they additionally can provide some standard tooling that will provide the baseline within the lab. Going from there, developers and testers can work in a self-service matter. That means they have to ask nobody as long they are in the boundaries that central IT and their project owner have decided on. So to sum up, Azure Dev Test Labs provides a self-service portal for developers and testers. It supports VMs, but it also supports platform services like web services on Azure or other infrastructure services. Everything that can be packaged into an ARM template can be run within the Azure Dev Test Lab. It supports custom templates for infrastructure resources, but also um, for artifacts or for um, uh, other Azure resources. It provides a cost management and cost control that you can use to see how much money is spent within your Azure Dev Test Lab. And it provides an auto shutdown for machines that currently nobody uses. So you can make sure that you don't pay for more than you actually currently need. Besides, of course, it allows to integrate your on-premises network with Azure Dev Test Lab if that's a scenario you're interested in. This was just a really theoretical introduction to Azure Dev Test Labs to give you an understanding of what it's all about. If you want to learn more, go to AKMS Azure DTL or check out my next videos. Thanks for watching.